Hello and welcome, I'm Maria Ressa. After 16 years, a peace agreement and decades of fighting in Mindanao is just a signature away. On January 25, the government and the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or the MILF, signed the final annex, a firearms deal, one of the most sensitive issues in the negotiations. Now that both sides reach an agreement, implementation is the next step. How will this peace agreement affect the lives of people in Mindanao and what steps should be done to make sure that it's implemented? Joining us to talk about this are the members of the Government Peace Panel, those who work so hard to make it happen. It's Chair Miriam Coronel Ferrer and panel members Yasmin Lau and Senen Bakani. Good day. Good day. Hello. Thank you for coming to talk to us about this and on Rappler. Uh, let me ask you, what what did you, how did you feel when it all ended, when that signature happened? <laughs> <laughs> A big relief that we finally uh, <coughs> finished all the documents. And uh, that certainly uh, made us look forward to the next phase, which is really the most difficult part, implementation. For you, what were the, were there moments <laughs> where you felt that things were not happening? Yeah, <laughs> several points in the, Though we couldn't s tell you the details, but it wasn't, as we've said, it wasn't a, an easy ride. Yeah, it's very difficult. And there are moments in the negotiation where things are not, you know, difficult to move forward. So there are times when you would think maybe uh, it's, it's not, it's not going to be this time. Then afterwards, but, you know, you're able to move it forward, then you feel like there's, there's, a, there's a great chance that this will happen. And for you, Sanen, what was the point in this last one? Well, of course, there will always be ups and downs uh, mm -hmm. during any negotiations. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've always believed that uh, we'll get to where we want, where we want to go. Uh, because I think all of us had faith uh, about the results of these negotiations. That's why we're here now. <laughs> <laughs> Miriam, yeah. 16 years. Um, now that you've signed this this agreement, uh, what's what are the next challenges you see ahead? What are the big challenges that need to be conquered? Well, we still have to go through the official signing ceremony, yes. so there's some preparatory work for that. We still need to come up with the terms of reference of the different bodies that we have to institute, especially mm -hmm. for the normalization component. Then uh, <coughs> we need to fast track the law and uh, so many huge. different areas that we just have to keep going we'll have to work on our office which we intend to put up in Cotabato City and all that so you'll yeah. continue you'll continue working the on panels this. will stay to oversee the implementation but with a lot of help from the different agencies and also the infrastructure that we'll be putting up from the very beginning, we've been talking about how you know both sides seemed intent on coming up with an agreement, but that mm -hmm. in the end, the devil will be in the details. Yes. What are the details that you expect will be difficult dealing with now? Uh, that will have to be put in the law, all of these details, because again, the, the agreement themselves are not the legal document. Uh, uh, we talked about putting up, uh, having an annual black grant, for instance, for the Bangsamoro political entity, but yes. there has to be a formula for that. And there's still a lot of technical work to be done to be able to come up with a good formula that should get into the law. Does the president have the political will uh, and the political support to actually make this law happen? I think as far as political will, there's no question about that. No question, that. yes. Uh, we, we would not be here if uh, we didn't see that in the president. Uh, definite political will, I think, in terms of supporting uh, the passage of the Bangsamoro Basic Law. We heard from him firsthand <laughs> that he will do what is necessary. Uh, and I think uh, the expectation, expectations are there uh, about his support. Uh, and we're optimistic that uh, it will get through Congress uh, more or less in accord with the spirit of what we have all signed. Do you think this has the support of the people in Mindanao? Well, given the response, no, um, majority have expressed, as you've said, uh, uh, they, they were born well, well, the, well, they were young when the war started and uh, I think you've heard ab about the, the old women who said for their lives uh, yes. they've 
they, what they lear, learn is you know they grew they, they grew up and then got old in being a backward no yes so they were younger so they backward they got married they have children and now their grandchildren are also so um, that kind of support but at the same time you have also heard about other voices whose interests are not actually in congruence with um, uh, the agreement and what they see are the who's going to be the political, uh, you know, um, uh, heirs to this agreement, and so you have those voices. But I guess uh, once you get to explain to them that, um, the, as what the MILF said, this is not they don't have a franchise for this, yes, and the inclusivity that we've been we've tried to establish since the beginning to let as many as broad, you know, um, people section. Uh, section to be engage so it's a matter of really bringing down f the actual the real information on the ground so they can see that indeed their li their future lies in this agreement miriam let me ask you it mm -hmm. is very rare in fact i'm not sure if there's any other country in the world where a muslim rebel group negotiated with a woman mm -hmm. uh, as the head of the government panel um, mm -hmm. what role did women play uh, the MILF is the largest Muslim separatist group in this country uh -huh. now so is it what was it like for a woman <laughs> negotiating with the MILF I uh, you know uh, we know that it was uh, something new for them uh, for us we have been working with men and women most of our lives, so it was something that was not like up, up, up there, up front, some kind of an obstacle, but we do understand that there had to be some adjustments on their part, and we'd like to thank them that I think that they have uh, willingly adjusted to new dynamics that might have been introduced by having more women on the table. Progressive, <laughs> on both fronts, <laughs> Muslim yeah. and Christian. Yeah. 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 And uh, it worked well. Do you think it <laughs> made the agreement? I mean, did, did the women play a role in getting this agreement yeah, together? Yes, yes. If it had been an all-male panel, would it have made a difference? Not <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sadeh, yeah, just needed yeah, to uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Did the women's touch make a difference? It, I, I guess, I mean, he might uh, be able to answer more, but I guess up front, uh, you could say that, um, for example, the gender provisions, the women's rights provisions. In the I've heard you talk about yeah. this. Yeah. Um, that came out from, although th we have gender sensitive men on board, but I guess, you know, that, that, that came out as, uh, you know, very strongly because of, 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 of the presence of the women and the women's movement. Uh, but at the same time, also the, de you know, being able to see what, what will make a more, more prob, more, most, you know, a uh, higher rate of success a uh, piece of women would be looking at every detail of, of the actual implementation of the car, how it how, to, how, how what are the needs that going to be that need to be responded to yes. I guess that also helped uh, the, the perspective of women in ensuring that you know more or less every <laughs> every <laughs> bits and pieces of what needs to be looked into should be looked into. I'm sure a man will, could have done what the women uh, <laughs> were able to do, depending, of course, on the right man. <laughs> 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 but uh, basically, uh, well, according to the <coughs> our counterpart, Mr. Iqbal, uh, he, f he thinks women are more meticulous, and mm -hmm. he did express that. Mm -hmm. No uh, question, no question. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> that we really go into the details, and mm -hmm. we do drive a hard bargain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In a nice, soft way. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Well, so let me let me zoom in. Um, almost as soon as the agreement, as you signed the annexes, mm -hmm. uh, there was conflict in Mindanao. Uh, the military mm -hmm. attack, the BIFF, a breakaway faction. Um, spoilers. You said you don't use the term spoilers, mm -hmm. but for every single time in 1996, the MNLF signed the agreement, and the mm -hmm. MILF di this were then the spoilers. The MILF signs an agreement. Now the MNLF is back. You've got the BIF. How do you look at this? What are there are many people who don't want to see this succeed. Who are they? How are you handling them? There are different interests, and these interests will have to find the space within the whole process. Such and a diplomatic way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> and so uh, this is a part of the process, trying to sort out where they will fit in, what kind of roles they will play. 
along the way. Uh, that's why I said we avoid using the word spoilers because we did have so-called spoilers in 2008 with the mm. MOA AD, and most of them are on board now. They are supporting us. Uh, they are some of, uh, most uh, one of our most active uh, uh, supporters of uh, you know getting everybody on board at the lo level of the local government and so on. So we just need to work it out how they would find their uh, roles here. Uh, the guarantees that they can have, the assurance that they, they will not be marginalized in the process, that it's, it's part of uh, evening out the playing field, mm -hmm. so long as everybody plays fair and within the new rules of the game. Who are these groups? Uh, there are also uh, all kinds. Some are just waiting on the wings. You know, when it comes to election time, there will be a lot of competitors. But so long as uh, uh, we establish, uh, uh, you know, some basic grounds for working together, then may the best men and women win uh, along the way, especially with regards to the political process. Did you see what happened in Zamboanga last year as as a precursor to the? you know, a way to try mm. to spoil the peace talks. Uh, that when the MNLF went into ha Javier Malik and uh, Normis Wari, who's still not around, <laughs> who's still missing. Uh, is this part of the, the goal, was to derail the peace process? Uh, that's, uh, that's part of it. Maybe there's the feeling that they have been, uh, that the, uh, the process with the MNLF was being marginalized, but you know, uh, it takes a lot of going back to what have been done before and uh, seeing also how we can still work together in the future because we do acknowledge that there might be some items that they feel have not been realized, but there's no reason why this cannot be addressed by the processes that are being opened up in this, uh, as part of the implementation. Let me go back on a little history. Javier Malik used to work with Jema Islamiya mm -hmm. and the strain of terrorism that came through this, yes. uh, mm -hmm. which at some point linked with the MILF. Mm -hmm. The MILF renounced all of this and really kicked them out around uh -huh. 2005 That's to right. show that they were sincere in the process. Mm -hmm. But those elements are still there. Mm -hmm. Javier Malik obviously s came back. Um, we have the BIFF. Mm -hmm. Those guys were working with the JI at some mm -hmm. point in the past. And the military said that they found a black flag. The black flag was a mm -hmm. symbol for Al-Qaeda to unite these types That's of extremist right. groups. What do you make of terrorist groups, extremist groups who will want to foil the progress that you've made? I, I think in the first place, uh, from the start of the negotiations, <coughs> we have tried to be all inclusive. Uh, we have consulted with all of our publics uh, in the process of You've worked very hard at this, mm -hmm. yes. It's never enough uh, yes. because even now, the big challenge is how to reach out uh, in terms of giving out the right information because I think there's still a lot of misrepresentation out there. Uh, those who are doing things because they don't have the right information. That's one big challenge. I think even now and I think even in the future, uh, we're not discounting anybody uh, and joining people to join the process. Uh, somehow, we'll never give up, I think, uh, because every additional individual who can be in included in the process is very important. Many people are related to each other, whether through official or unofficial means. There's always a good way of reaching out to people. Uh, I think that's one thing we want to emphasize. Uh, we'll never give up reaching out uh, officially or unofficially through relatives, friends, and community leaders. Uh, some dignified way of joining the process. Uh, not just joining a bandwagon. Uh, and we will continue to do that, uh, I think, even after the implementation. I, I don't think it's ever too late. Uh, anyone who wants to join the process is very much welcome. You're not discounting, then, an organized group. I mean, they seem to have been marginalized a lot more. It's certainly a much smaller faction, fraction of the group now. So you, this is not a threat, terrorism or or groups that yes, use terrorists. Some, some of those groups are uh, really uh, issues of law enforcement uh, because there's always a non-violent way of try trying to join the struggle. Uh, we have mm -hmm. to distinguish. But at the same time, even the armed groups, I think, 
when you look at it, there's, I think there's always a way of reaching out. Uh, I don't think anyone is permanently evil. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> People change, I think, yes. uh, depending on yes. what they see. Uh, uh, and we're s I think we just have to be optimist. Uh, any addition to, to the group of uh, hopefully a bigger and bigger consensus would really help the process very much. But the Imenelet, it was not an all. I mean, it was not a monolithic. Yes. Yeah. Mm. I, even in the Sambuanga, not you know y y with the different groups. Yes. It was. Miss Wari, uh, not not Sema, and uh, because yes. they came out and yes. said, and even with Miss Wari, not all the ground commanders were Correct. with him, so you can all identify. Yes, uh, but who really, yeah. Interesting who were that Javier Malik, who still had that extremist yeah, route, yeah, was with him, yeah. right? Yeah. So. But then, as you, uh, but the point is that not the entire MNLF yes. was when it was with that. No, no, they they said that either they they would also prefer to to do it the non-violent way for as long as uh, you know the, the 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 communication open and the, the and the and the processes are there. So so you see as as we've said, you know, there's no permanent position on mm. in, in this. So so who knows? You might be able to change the, the if we open up more at uh, uh, um, um, a democratic process, an electoral process, where they think their voices can be more heard and be represented in the in the governance. Um, that they may choose this. Yeah, in a way that uh, they they we have a more credible election. Uh, who knows? That might change the landscape. Mahagirik Bal at one point said that uh, he that the MILF would help bring these criminals mm -hmm. um, to government. Mm -hmm. Did he? Is this part of the agreement? Well, yes, we have mechanisms for that. We already have the ad hoc joint action group right. where some coordination is already uh, uh, well established to ensure that uh, the hostilities do not spill over, that there is actual cooperation in uh, criminal interdiction. Uh, then uh, aside from that, as part of the normalization annex, we have agreed to put up what we call joint peace and security teams where you will have contingents from the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, mm -hmm. and the uh, BIAF, Bangsamoro Islamic Thank Armed you. Forces, which is the armed wing of the MILF, to work together, some kind of uh, peacekeeping teams that will be posted in different communities to ensure that uh, the, uh, the, the community continues to be free from any kinds of harassment, either by criminal activities or some other armed groups. Um, what about uh, in the interim process now you have the MILF <coughs> with their arms? I know this mm. is the final part. I guess, how can you translate the legal language of the documentation to actual what happens on the ground? Um, some of the MILF fighters are saying, you know, well, we don't want to give up our guns if the private armed groups are still yeah. out there. What, what's going to happen now? It's going to be uh, everything all together. I mean, in trying to address all of these different security challenges alongside the decommissioning process. Well, we understand what they say when, uh, when they say that, that uh, how can you expect us to give up our arms when all the other groups uh, out there are fully armed. Uh, yes. At the same time, we tell them it's not going to be fair if you keep your arms and you will be running for elections and you expect the others not to have arms as well. So it's, it's really uh, that kind of uh, coordinated, comprehensive approach that we will have to undertake on the security front. How does that translate to real world terms when we're struggling with reforms in the armed forces mm -hmm. and the, in the PNP? What, does, what will this mean when you say that? We'll, we'll need to have very focused interventions in Mindanao alongside the institutional reforms that we're also trying to introduce in the AFP as well as in the police force, but certainly these will have to complement each other. But for that part of Mindanao, our programs will be very, very definite and focused to ensure that we get really good results. Are you optimistic on the government side that we're prepared to do what, what you agreed to do? <laughs> The government is very united on this. They, everybody has their marching orders from the president. We are assured of full support uh, from uh, the different uh, agencies, uh, the resources, as well as the, the, that kind of uh, consistency in the primacy of the peace process. The armed forces have been uh, very cognizant of that, and they have been very supportive. 
But the reality is, this, and I'm not sure if you can if you can uh, verify this, but on the ground it seems mm -hmm. that incidents of criminal ac activities have actually increased um, in the last year. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with just law and order, peace and order, the peace and order situation as we're decommissioning a, an armed group? It's not going to be easy mm -hmm. because there are a lot of, you know, but part of this is part of the, the kind of uh, economic uh, situation that they're in. So we're hoping that um, <coughs> when the economic programs come in, not too many people will be attracted to the kind of activities that bring them quick cash, but actually also bring can, could bring them into all kinds of trouble. So the, you know, the flourishing industries, they're related to kidnapping and so on. We hope that uh, this will die down uh, along, uh, as we go along uh, putting up, putting the foundation for that kind of peace and sustainable peace and development for these areas. But it's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It's going to take some time. <coughs> you can't have change in overnight. Uh, it takes about a generation to really uh, build a new society, a new economy for uh, for these areas. <laughs> yeah, at the same time, I think. Uh, yeah, although it, uh, we, I think we all know it takes time, but I think it's good to show something quickly uh, because there's a lot of hope. There's a lot of optimism. Yes. That's why a follow through in terms of at least some feeling that there is a change mm. for the better. Uh, I guess we have to look at possibly low-hanging fruits there. Yes. Those which we can do quickly. Like what? I suspect even s s basic necessities like what potable water and electricity, I think. Again, I giving them a better life, right? Yeah. Uh, I know we have to do some we, we need to take a look at the, at the resource base, but I think there are so many things that we know already. That's why I think we need to plan quickly on what is doable in a short period of time, so that at least uh, there's a sign. Because some of these things in terms of sustainable livelihood yes. takes more time. But I think just to show that there is a change for the better, to, get to reinforce that hope that feeling of hope, that feeling mm -hmm. of optimism. Because gradually, I think, hopefully, uh, as it snowballs, uh, and I think we need to see what we can do up to the May 2016. Because I think that's part of the goal, to mm -hmm. substantially complete many of the commitments uh, that we have, just to make sure that uh, the pro hopefully the process uh, becomes irreversible. Mm. What are the main things that we want to see, that you want to see on the ground? Well, for one, uh, the youth are, is, you know, it's a very good base. Yes. It's a vibrant. The, the uh, more Bagsamoro youth have been, they're more exposed compared to their parents and their previous generation. Yes. They, they've s they, some have gone abroad, have studied, and with the, uh, the advance in uh, communication with the internet and all that, the access to information. I'm I'm hoping that we open up a new new, new level of possibilities that they can see outside. That if it's possible for other communities, why it can't be possible for them? So con constant involvement of, of of the youth is 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 very very important, and also of course the gatekeepers, the the religious. <laughs> Uh, leaders uh, will have to see a more uh, a more progressive uh, you know vibrant Muslim mm. they, they are Muslims but not necessarily they don't have to be poor I mean yes. they don't have to be backward you can be Muslim at the same time be at the be the, at the forefront of development so these are the they need to see all of these possibilities and I guess that's something that we need to invest and really continue building on Fantastic. There's several questions coming in on social mm -hmm. media. Let me throw you a few. From <coughs> at Fora Rhines, how can we teachers help in the peace talks? How can we inculcate to students that peace is better than most alternatives? Well, I guess he or she, he already said it, that we do have to inculcate this in, uh, in our children, this kind of a perspective. Uh, 
but uh, first of all we do need to get all the children in school especially in uh, these conflict affected areas it's very hard if uh, children every now and then have to move evacuate from areas that are par affected by the bombings and so on or even for their schools to be actually used as evacuation centers instead of learning centers so that's the first thing uh, keep everybody in school we know that some of the uh, the those who get into the rebel groups are children themselves. Yes. Uh, I think some of the reports that we have with regards to the BIFF involve some children child who are actually yes. child combatants who are actually probably killed as part of the fighting. And that is really very unfortunate. Uh, we need to put in a lot of resources in our educational system, especially in the public school system, as well as in the madrasa system, where, uh, where Muslim kids also, some of whom get their education only from madrasa schools and so on. Is that something that we've already moved towards, uh, in incorporating it into the, the educational system? Mm -hmm. Have yeah. we started doing that? We have. Yeah, yeah. In in the in the ARMM, okay. um, we have this both uh, the madrasa system, and in in other parts of the country, mm -hmm. where there are uh, there are Muslim students in in like for example here in Metro Manila, uh, there are uh, public schools here where they have the Asatid uh, system where at the weekend mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the the Muslim kids are taught. Mm -hmm. Arabic and but Monday to Friday they go to the regular uh, educational system. So that's something that has been, you know. Mm -hmm. been uh, are you addressing prejudice, for example? There really is a strong element of prejudice against the, our, the Muslim minority in the Philippines. Is that something that can be actively addressed? Is that was that even brought up in the peace talks? Yeah, yeah, of course. The the equal <laughs> the equality to basic rights uh, yes. provisions in the in the the peace agreement is very clear. Not only for in Muslims, the, but yes. the indigenous peoples who are also going to be part of the of, this. of the uh, Bangsamoro political entity. Uh, we the, the upholding the basic human rights is is within the yes. agreement. Ah, so you're looking at it, yeah, but yeah. I mean, in the context of um, trying to change social views, um, it's it's. A bit embedded. I mean, again, yeah, 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 this yeah, is yeah, 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 it's yeah. it's hard to be a minority. I mean, in, in Indonesia, the, yeah. the Christians are the minorities, mm -hmm. but um, we seem to take that for granted in in majority Christian Philippines. Is there is there something that would put it into an educational uh, system? Talking well, about things like this, the agreement is based on historical <laughs> injustice. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and when you talk to the leaders of the Bangsamoro. I think there's a lot of consensus in terms of the long-term solution. Mm. They always say education, education, education. And I think in, in terms of your question, in terms of biases or prejudice, from personal experience, we, we have done it the other way. Uh, we have an operation in Maguindanao, business operation. Very few Christians, mostly Muslims. Mm -hmm. We have shown that uh, there can be equality uh, in the, uh, what we do at work uh, in your personal lives. I think that's the best proof of trying to show that we're all the same. Uh, we're all Filipinos. So we don't have to discriminate against anybody. And. If, you d if they can see it, so much the better, so that it's just not talk. I guess, yes, what I was trying to say is, you, you said it, that the whole agreement is based mm. on historical injustice, yes, right? Yes. How does it translate to our lives today here? This, this agreement, how does it translate? How will it change Mindanao now, or how will it change Manila? First and most of all, the ac acknowledgement of Bangsamoro as an identity is already a very big, big, you know, uh, okay, from were crying in Malacanang, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. From a uh, derogatory moral to a Bangsamoro people of, of, you know, with their dignity and history and all that intact. It's not. It's already a, a big, big achievement by itself. The recognition and the president, the president assigned. Now we've signed the framework agreement of the Bangsamoro. Uh, you know, then talked about Bangsamoro as a people. I mean, that was really huge. You know, that was really huge. And, and then you ask why is government talking to, to the banks more? Why are we giving much? Yes. Because if you look at the wealth, 
well generation. Seventy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and this, and then you have the addendum on waters, and you yes. have all of the other, and and they'll ask why are you giving much to them, and then simply the answer is that because, because of the existing inequality and all this and poverty. I mean, that's a big big message to the rest of the country that you know they may be banks tomorrow, they may be not. Um, uh, Christian, not with the major, but you know, the resources in the in the region that could also because part of the agreement is that um, gradually you will move away from the subsidy of national government yes. and the vision was is to be able to for Bangsamoro to contribute you know the other way around being subsidized by government since the beginning of ARMM to a situation where Bangsamoro is not no longer receiving anything from national government but rather giving to to the rest of the of the country is something that is very noble so so these are you know That's in, yes yes you're yes. happy as a Muslim this agreement is, is yeah 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 because I mean the this because there is this agreement I mean there's yes. this precedent and there's this the kind of a um, uh, MLF leadership that renounced, you know, war and terrorism and is willing to, you know, this, all these things coming into play together at the same time. It's like converging <laughs> factors. It's, it's, it, it's a moment itself that I don't think will ever happen again. So it's, it's, a, it's a one shot <laughs> to peace that uh, I hope will be able to nurture and be to its uh, fruitful uh, conclusion. Miriam, there's, I'll, I'll just zoom into one detail. I actually have two last questions on mm -hmm. here. Um, the, this detail is on the mining part, on the mm -hmm. mineral resources. 75% of the mineral resources mm -hmm. of this area will be going to the banks of metallic minerals. For metallic minerals. That's right. Okay, so uh, the Philippines as a whole uh, is one of, it's the fifth largest in terms of mineral mm -hmm. resources. And yet our own policy actually mm -hmm. seems quite divided. There's a, an EO and the I, the RRR still aren't there. Mm -hmm. For the mining one. For the mining, yes. For the mining industry is pretty much in, in yes. kind of a disarray it's right now. It's in a now. flux right now because right. of the, uh, uh, I think, some initiative to rewrite the law. The law. And so down to taxes, uh, profit right. sharing. But, uh. but the problem is, will, th will the Bank Samoro be able to s craft their own law separate from the Philippine government? Or mm -hmm. must it must it be part of the Philippine government? How will this? How oh, will these well, dynamics work? W when we talk about revenue sharing, it's about sharing from government revenue as defined in the law. The law, and that's uh, that for now refers to the two percent excise tax that is collected for every uh, mining activity, and that's the one that's going to be shared between the national government and the central government, 75-25 in favor of the Bank Samoro. And if the law changes the, gov the, the, the nature of the taxes or other revenues that the government will be able to collect from all other mining industries in o all parts of the country, then that means that there is more to share between the central government and the Bank Samoro government. So it works for everybody, for the government's favor, because I think the sentiment is that we are actually uh, uh, charging too little yes for, for from the resources that are being extracted and of course there are other ways to increase these such as for instance uh, doing uh, a lot more processing on the ground rather than just simply hauling away the raw materials the ores and Correct. bringing these to other uh, to other countries but that's all part of the reforms that the national government also wants to introduce as far as the mining industry is concerned and then the, the last question concerns Sharia law Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the past, I know that the MILF has said that it has, has implemented Sharia law in areas. There were periods of time in the past when the MILF was actually a more coherent governing body than local governments in some of those areas, and they, they implemented Sharia law. How will this work in now um, under this agreement? No, we, we already have the PD 1083, which is the Code of Muslim Personal Laws that allows the operation of Sharia on, on personal laws. Okay. And I guess the question is how do you define yeah, the uh, difference? Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, what we're saying probably <coughs> is that because they also implemented some elements of criminal, you know, uh, which is uh, under the, the, the Constitution, we, have ve we are very clear on that. B but then, you know, in the general uh, assembly of the of, of uh, the Bangsamoro, uh, they have competence over 
Sharia system, justice system, and uh, they 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 are allowed to propose, but uh, 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 provisions uh, or improvement in the Sharia. But again, it will have to go through the our legislative process. It's it's the constitution is still the supreme. Um, you know, and on whatever provisions in the constitution that is allowed, they may. But you know, um, there are limits to that. In terms so of you the would criminal. you would put boundaries, for example, Christians who live in these in the areas under the Bangsamoro entity, um, would they be subject to? No, the that's very clear. Okay, excellent. Yes, but it's only for Muslims. And the IPs have their own customary laws. Custom. Okay. Um, the last question from social media. There are a few, but I'll just throw you the last one. How can we be sure? This is from Romar Jaslet Agregado. How can we be sure that in the future there'd be no political conflicts between the <laughs> national government <laughs> and the Bangsamoro <laughs> political entity that might be a cause for another armed struggle? Well, if we all work together for that future, then we can get there. But if we, you know, uh, go on dividing ourselves, worrying about all the dangers that lurk ahead, then we will certainly never get there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> Let me go, I guess let's start with Sinan and just ask for your last thoughts. You are, at a, we are at a pivotal moment and mm -hmm. congratulations on your work. Um, please Sinan, your last thoughts on where we are, where we're headed. Communicate, communicate, reach out, reach out. Don't let anything fall through the cracks. Don't take anything for granted in the implementation. Yeah, well, the idea is the body will be left behind so that it, everybody will feel that their needs are being addressed. And so that's the biggest challenge of this all. And the only way we'll know that if people will tell us and engage us on what their needs are and if they feel that they're, not, they're being left out, then just get it. That's what you said, communicate that engagement, keeping being in touch with each other. And the head of the panel, <laughs> <laughs> your thoughts? Well, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, as I've said, we are as skeptical as everyone else. And that's why we are certainly uh, trying to put everything in place, all the safety nets, all the right infrastructure, all the best people to get into this work. But it doesn't mean that we can tell you now 100% we will guarantee you we are not God, mm -hmm. but we can certainly do our work and uh, do our best. <laughs> Fantastic. It is, uh, it is a, a key moment yes. in our history, 16 years. Uh, That's right. And I'm sure Iqbal feels very relieved. <laughs> He's uh, been negotiating forever. Yeah. 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 Um, thank you very much thank for you. coming yeah. to speak thank with us also. today. We've been speaking with peace negotiators, Miriam <laughs> Coronel Ferrer, Yasmin Lau, and Senen Bakani on the Bangsamoro Agreement and its effects on the lives of people in Mindanao and in the Philippines, the end of 16 years of war, hopefully. I'm Maria Ressa. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you guys. You're